Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's a good day. I hope you're feeling it. So I'm finally coming at you with the most requested video ever on my channel that you guys have been waiting to see literally since I started my channel. So this is basically how my whole family came to Islam. So I've been doing my revert series for months now, like literally since February. And I was meant to do five videos back to back to back, but it didn't work out like that. And now here I am finally with the last part of my revert series. I wanted to do a series for this because I feel like I couldn't condense my revert story into one single video. There was so much that went on, so much to it, and I wanted you guys to properly understand. So I've got a whole bunch of videos, five to be exact, including this one, and you guys can watch those. I'll link those below. Um, but this basically is the last of that series where I talk about my coming to Islam and this video is about how my family came to Islam. Now obviously I'm not going to go in depth with every single person's revert story because that would be ridiculous and that would take forever and also like it's not my place to tell their story. I can only tell my own. But I am going to give you like a summary and um and I'm going to explain that. I also have one sister who accepted Islam and then like went out of Islam so I'm going to talk to you about her as well. So I have six siblings so there's seven of us all together and I also have my mom. So that is what my family is, right? I have my mom and one sister that are yet to accept Islam, but the rest of us are now Muslim, okay? So I'm going to give you the rundown because a lot of people get really amazed about the fact that my whole family basically is Muslim. And a lot of people want to know how that happened and like what happened because it's pretty rare to see like a law guide an entire family to Islam. If you guys are interested in seeing that then please keep watching. So I'm going to begin by giving you the breakdown of my family dynamics and where I fit in. So I have a younger brother and a younger sister. All of my other siblings are older than me. Older than me I have two older sisters and two older brothers okay. So I'm kind of in the middle. My oldest sister who is the oldest of all of the siblings was the first to accept Islam. So I'm going to give you her revert story and then I'm going to go in order of, you know, age and version of events and that sort of thing. My older sister is in her late 30s now and she has been Muslim for like as long as I can remember, like my whole life. For those of you that don't know, I have been practicing Islam for only four years and I was second in my family to begin practicing Islam. So she was first and I was second. So a lot of people are really curious about her and a lot of people really want to meet her and I wonder why she's never on my channel and wonder why I don't put her in my videos and she's not on my Instagram yet. She's going to be on my Instagram soon, but we're just going to take a cute selfie first. Anyways, I'm going to give you the rundown of her. So her name is Rebecca. She didn't change her name. None of us have changed our name. None of us want to change our names. Maybe my older brother might change his name. We'll get to that. Anyways, so she grew up always believing in God, I guess, but she was introduced to Islam at a very, very young age. So her primary school best friend was a Muslim and she came from a, like a more cultural family than religious and she was very close with her and she used to visit her house all the time and her family was very, very beautiful. Her family used to buy her Eid clothes, um, take her to Eid prayer, all of that sweet stuff. Um, she used to fast in Ramadan with them as a kid. Like this was her as a kid. So this was her first introduction to Islam. And she kind of like grabbed onto it there and she stuck with it. And she just always like had this like love for Islam in her heart. Allah instilled that love for him from a very, very young age. So as she started growing up, she kind of started researching Islam more. And this was at the point where Islam wasn't like a huge thing in the media and the propaganda wasn't extreme and also the internet wasn't really like a thing. So it was very hard to find knowledge unless you knew people. So as she got older she was kind of like very lost as to where to search for knowledge. Now look, I honestly I don't know a whole lot about my sister's revert story but I'm just going to give you the basic summary. So as she got a bit older she met her husband, her now husband, and they never ever ever spoke about religion together. That was not a topic that just came up, like it just didn't come up. So she used to always research on her own and I remember she had a friend and her friend was married to a Muslim man and she mentioned to him once that she was trying to learn about Islam but she didn't know how like she didn't know where to go she didn't have sources the internet wasn't really a thing like I just said so she didn't know where to look and where to learn and this was when he gave her these bunch of tapes or CDs or whatever they were and they were from like a famous speaker and I honestly like I for the life of me cannot remember what this speaker's name was. I think he passed away, but he is a very famous speaker and he also gave her her first Quran. So from there is when she learned. 
And as she literally listened to all of these CDs, that's how she accepted Islam. She was like, well, this is 100% the truth, and she accepted Islam. That's how she accepted Islam, that's how she got her first Quran. And then she ended up marrying her husband, and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this was like when I was like, I don't even, I wasn't alive. Like, I really don't think I was alive. If I was, I was like one years old. So this was not really something that we ever spoke about in our house. This wasn't really something that my mum even knew about. My mum wasn't very educated and has never been very educated. Alhamdulillah, she didn't have parents, so she was never taught. She grew up in a children's home, and so she didn't really have anyone to teach her about anything. She didn't know about Islam. She, my mum did not know about Islam. So when my sister accepted Islam, it wasn't something that we really spoke about because no one like understood it except for like her. So growing up, I did not know that my sister was a Muslim. After my sister Rebecca is my brother Wayne. And my brother Wayne, I think he believed in God, but he didn't really know what, like what he believed in. He was researching Islam before he was killed. And I have a whole story about that and I'll link that below if you guys are interested. Um, and I'm about to do a part two about that. But before he was murdered, he had a time where he was researching Islam. So when he died, he was actually in the process of learning about Islam. But I'm not going to say he was Muslim. And so um, he's out of the equation. He died upon disbelief from what I know. And if you guys are interested in me doing a whole video about how to recover from that, how to recover from the knowledge that someone that you love has died a non-Muslim, then I can definitely do that because I feel like that might benefit a lot of people. But let me know if you would want to see that. So I've got my older sister accepted Islam first and then my brother died and he wasn't Muslim. So if you haven't watched my other revert stories, then you're probably going to get confused here. So my advice would be to pause this video and go watch my other videos. I know they're really long, but you really do need to watch those to understand this video. So, like I mentioned before in my other videos, I accepted Islam very young and then I re-accepted Islam once I was a bit older. So, when I first accepted Islam, I was 10 years old. And the way that it worked is that my older brother Chris, my older sister Tiffany, who is a year older than me and the one that is no longer a Muslim, a lot of people were curious as to how she turned away from Islam and what happened there. I will explain that in this video. And I, all three of us kind of researched Islam around the same time. And this was just before my brother died and my brother was murdered, right? So my brother Chris was kind of off on his own. He was very much like close with my brother-in-law, so my sister Rebecca's husband. He used to go with him to watch lectures and go to the mosque and do all of that. He was kind of off on his own. And he accepted Islam with him. And all three of us accepted Islam around the same time, okay? So he accepted Islam then and my sister Tiffany and I were together. So we kind of relied more on my sister Rebecca and my sister was a little bit hesitant I think to teach us because my mum didn't know much about it and I think my mum at this stage wasn't the biggest fan of Islam because it was at the point where it was starting to get you know heated in the media and so my mum didn't really like like it and so I think that my sister didn't really want to put too much pressure on it. And the way that I actually came to know that Islam existed was that my sister actually put hijab on and that was the first time that it actually became apparent that my sister is a Muslim and I didn't understand it but I learned about it then. So I researched it and I tried to learn from my sister but she didn't really teach me too much and I had to learn by myself and my sister Tiffany and I kind of learned the basics by ourselves and that was literally all we needed to know that Islam was the truth and this was at 10 years old y'all so it's pretty young to be able to make decisions about what you want to believe in but nonetheless we decided this is what we wanted to believe in and so we took Shahada together. So my sister Tiffany and I literally took Shahada together. Like I was saying Ashadu and La ilaha illallah at the exact same time that she was saying Ashadu and La ilaha illallah. Like it was one of the most beautiful moments ever to get to do that with my sister who was at the time my best best friend ever. So we took Shahada together and then life happened and my brother was murdered and my family fell apart and this is where part two of my revert story is really really important because that was kind of where you really need to know like how the ups and downs of my life went and how we fell into depression and all of that like you really need to know that part to be able to understand why my sister then was taken away from Islam I guess and my brother Chris as well 
he was along that journey with me into depression and we were all kind of like spiraling down by ourselves. And so Tiffany, Christopher and I were not at a stage where our Dean was firm. It wasn't, we weren't at a stage where we were like strong and could rely on our religion. Like for example, today I would be able to rely on my religion. And so when my brother died and life got so tough for all of us, we kind of all just rather than holding tight to our Dean, we let it go. And this is also where part three of my revert story where I spoke about how the Ummah made me feel when I accepted Islam comes in because Tiffany's leaving Islam had a lot to do also with how people treated her, how people responded to her being Muslim and how hard it all was. So life got the better of her and basically she gave up her religion. And it's not that simple and it didn't happen all at once, but just, you know, over the years, while I tried to learn more, she kind of just drifted down and didn't want to learn. She reached the point where she was like, okay, I'm not going to say I'm a Muslim anymore because I'm not. And a lot of people are very curious as to why she, like, why she left Islam, what her issue is with Islam and why she's no longer a Muslim. And if I'm being completely honest, and this is just my opinion, and this is just my thoughts and perhaps she will have a completely different truth than mine and perhaps she'll say no like I just genuinely don't think Islam is the truth but I don't think that's the case. I think she believes in Islam and deep down she knows Islam is the truth and I really really do think that. When you don't build a foundation upon Islam it's easy to get really lost and so I think that's what happened with her. I think that she got lost in this world and because of that she stopped seeing Islam as a guidance, as a way of life and started just seeing it as a bunch of rules and a bunch of regulations. And it's I think easy to see it like that if you don't see the wisdom behind like all of these rules and regulations. I think that's what happened to her. I think it was just a process of her being like you know like, I just want to be able to live my life. And she very much believes in God but she's kind of still at that point that I was at at 15 years old that I spoke to you guys about about how I just felt empty like I just felt utter emptiness I think she's still at that point and she's at that point where she doesn't know where to direct her love subhanAllah that's why she's not a Muslim anymore Basically just a whole lot of everything. Depression got the most of her. The Ummah being so mean got the most of her. Life got the most of her. She didn't learn the foundations well enough. And now it's at the point where I think she still loves Islam. She loves that I'm a Muslim. She loves that I love this. She loves that my whole family is a Muslim. But she herself won't say she's a Muslim. So that's just my theory of why she's not a Muslim. So often, like, I wish that she would ask me questions because I feel like if she just asked me questions about Islam, I could answer every single one of her questions in a way that she would be able to understand them. And I genuinely, like, I know her. She's my sister. I know how she thinks. And so I feel like if she asked me questions, I could make it clear to her. I could explain her purpose. I could make her fall in love with Islam. I could build the foundations with her so that she would be strong in faith and she would rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But... She just doesn't ask me questions and so I'm not going to force my religion upon her, you know what I mean? The most I can do is be kind to her like I have been with the rest of my siblings and hope that she will one day accept this Sam. So, that's my sister Tiffany. My brother Chris was very much like me and very much like Tiffany and he went through that depression stage and so because he wasn't strong in faith either, he kind of diverted but... He did recently come back to Islam. So I started practicing four years ago, alhamdulillah. That was when I just realized, you know, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of living like this. I'm over it. Like, I want to be a Muslim. I want to start practicing my deen. And so I did four years ago. My brother, about two years ago, had this realization again, where he then reaffirmed his faith and decided, you know what, I'm a Muslim. I'm not going to get caught up in this world. I'm not going to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. And so we reaffirmed his faith again together. And he retook shahada and became a Muslim again. A lot of people get really confused about Chris because his story is very much like mine. It requires a really thorough explanation as to how like he came to Islam and then got a bit lost and then came back to it. And he always had in his heart that Islam was the truth but there was always just something else. There was always just like a reason as to why he wasn't you know coming to Islam and practicing Islam and implementing Islam. Two years ago now he you know, reaffirmed his faith and it was the most beautiful thing. Like I wanted him so badly to be a Muslim and I feel like the moment he became Muslim, our relationship just blossomed. And you guys like love mine and Chris's relationship and you guys always talk about how like you wish you had a big brother like that and you wish you had a strong bond like we have. And I have that with all of my siblings but it's very apparent with Chris that we are like best friends and he really is my best friend. And alhamdulillah, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that for us 
when he accepted Islam. After that is my little brother. I really love my little brother's reverse story. It's upon a lot. so amazing. So let me tell you that. So my little brother was the one that I was super, super worried about. I was worried about it because all of us had shown an interest in Islam. He was not interested in Islam. He never asked me questions about Islam. He like, he was just silent. Whenever Islam was spoken about, whenever religion was spoken about, he was just completely silent. And so he was literally the one where I was like, like, Ya Allah, like, please guide him. He was the one that I was most worried about, subhanAllah, because he showed no interest at all. Like, if you're gonna argue against Islam, okay, cool, because I can explain it to you, and at least you're showing interest in not being a Muslim, but he wasn't showing an interest whatsoever. The way that it happened is I took my family, or some of my family, on a holiday for a present for my mum, for a gift. We went to this holiday place, and there was no internet connection, nothing, for about four days. And I was speaking to my older brother and he had just had a fight with my little sister and he was being really, really mean. And my little sister wasn't Muslim at this stage. And I was telling him, like I was just straight up lecturing him, like you need to be nicer. The way that you guide your family, the way that you teach your family, the way that you engage with your family, that is how they're gonna become Muslim. Like how are you gonna like help your little sister be a Muslim if you're so mean to her? Like automatically when people know that you're a Muslim, they look at you as a representation of Islam. And so I was arguing with my older brother and I was telling him like, no, you need to like be nice to my little sister basically. And he was like, blah, 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 blah. Well, sitting on the front of the fire at this stage and he just turns to me, he's like, well, what about Nicholas then? I was like, don't worry about Nicholas. Nicholas is gonna become Muslim like soon, right? Don't worry about Nicholas. And wallah, like this was a joke. Like this was a joke that I was saying in my head and I didn't actually believe it at all. Like at all, I didn't actually think that Nicholas was gonna become Muslim anytime soon. And he was sleeping on the lounge behind us and he woke up from his sleep and it's nine o'clock in the morning and he says to me, Sam, like how do you even become Muslim? Don't you have to go to the mosque to become Muslim? And I was like, no. I was like, you just say the Shahada. You just believe that there's one God and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and you believe in this and this and this and this and this. And I gave him the breakdown and I told him, and you say the Shahada, we can say it right now if you want, you can become Muslim. And he was like, well, yeah, I do. Like, I do want to become Muslim. I was like, what? Like, are you kidding me? Like, you want to become Muslim? Like, I was mind blown because I had just said, yeah, Nicholas is about to become Muslim, but it was a joke. And now he was coming at me and he was telling me like, yeah, I actually do want to become Muslim. I was shooketh, man. And I remember my older brother, he was like, mom is not going to be happy with this. Like, I want nothing to do with this. I want to leave the room. I was like, no, sit down. And I grabbed him and I was like, sit down. We're about to take shahada with my little brother. So I took shahada with my little brother and he became Muslim. And it was really funny because straight after, let me tell you a backstory, right? So my family love Monopoly. It's like a big thing in my family and it's like one of our favorite board games. And I always, always, always win at Monopoly and it's just pure skill. Like I'm just talented, right? My little brother always argues with me and he says like, why are you so good at Monopoly? And I remember one time I said to him, it's because I'm Muslim and I pray. I pray to Allah that I'll win Monopoly. I pray to Allah that I'll dodge all the hotels. And it's because I'm Muslim. And I always tell him that. And he turns to me and he was like, that's cheating. Like, you can't pray. You can't pray. That's cheating. So when he accepted Islam, the first thing he said to me was, right, now that I'm a Muslim, we're going to play Monopoly tonight. And I am going to win. SubhanAllah. We played Monopoly that night and he won. Alhamdulillah, it's because I let him win, but whatever. So that is my little brother's revert story and he reverted in August of last year. Now, my little sister was then the last of us. So she's the youngest and she's only 13, subhanAllah. When I made my YouTube channel, my little sister was not a Muslim. My little sister accepted Islam in March. So that was like very recent, but my little sister accepted Islam and I'm gonna tell you her revert story. So she's always been very like engaged and very much wants to learn about everything and very much wants to like know about how she's supposed to be spending her life. And I think she very much looks up to me as a role model and so she looks at me as a demonstration of Islam as well. And I think that she just fell in love with it through me. Alhamdulillah that Allah has given me that mercy. And so I remember we were having a conversation at the front of my house and I was just teaching her about, you know, the purpose of life. And she kind of just turns to me and she's like, well, I want to be a Muslim. And I kind of took it as a joke, not going to lie. Like I looked at her and I was like, Vashti, her name is Vashti. I was like, Vashti, you don't know enough about the religion. Like I'm not going to let you become Muslim. 
And I was like, no, like it's not a little thing. You can't just say shahada and whatever. Like you have to implement that. You have to dedicate yourself to that. You have to love that. You don't do it for me. I don't want you to do it for me. I don't want you to do it to make me happy. And I kind of lectured her as to lecture her out of it because I wanted her to be serious and I didn't want her to do it as like a temporary thing where it's like, you know, I'm Muslim now and I'm not going to be Muslim in a month. But she was like, no, Sam, like, please. Like she was near crying and she was like, I want to be Muslim. Like, let me be a Muslim right now. And subhanAllah, I was like, okay, um, let's take shahada. So we took shahada together. So when I took shahada, my mum wasn't very great about it. And she wasn't very good about me being a Muslim. And I had a lot of struggles with that. I'm not ever going to go in depth about that because I just, I don't want to put my mum out there like that on the internet. But she wasn't very great. When my little brother accepted Islam, I actually warned him and I told him like, you might not want to tell mum about it. And he was like, I don't really care. Like, I'm going to tell mum about it anyways. And he told my mum straight away. And my mum was like, yeah, whatever. Like, my mum was completely okay with it. Which was so weird for me. Because my mum was completely not okay with it when I was a Muslim. Like, when I first accepted Islam. So, subhanAllah, that just shows how much my mum has progressed. And my mum has grown in love with Islam. But, yeah. So, when my little sister accepted Islam, I don't know why. But she was really scared. She was scared to tell my mum. And so the way that she told my mum was so, so funny. Like my mum came out to ask me a question quickly because like I said, we we're sitting out in the front and she came out and she just, my little sister just screamed out, mum, I'm a Muslim now. I don't care what you have to say. I don't care if you agree with it or not. You can do whatever you want to me, but I am a Muslim and I don't care about anything except for me being a Muslim. My mum just looked at her and she was like, Vashti, good old dog biscuits and I like I remember that line so clearly because I was dying laughing and it's like such an Aussie bogan thing to say it means like good for you like I don't care like live your life and my mom was completely okay with my little sister accepting Islam too and I still remember my little sister's face she was just like pure shock she was like what like mum's okay subhanAllah my sister I really didn't think that she was going to take it seriously but she has taken religion so seriously since then she has fallen in love with hijab she literally wants to put hijab on now and I'm like no Vashti like you're not at a stage where you're like you're educated enough to wear hijab but she wants to wear hijab now and she's fallen in love with it as well so yeah as for my mum, a lot of people are wondering why my mum is not Muslim. My mum very much believes parts of the Qur'an. She thinks that, you know, parts of the Qur'an are true and she has trouble believing in some other things. My mum is very emotional and she has had a lot of experiences in her life that she automatically resonates to a certain thing and she automatically has come to a conclusion about why these things have happened and how these things have happened and all of that. And it's not really my story to tell, subhanAllah. Maybe one day if my mum accepts Islam, I will do a whole video on her journey because that would be amazing. But right now, I don't think I really feel comfortable speaking about that on the internet too much. But that is why she won't accept Islam. She's a very emotional person. She's very like in touch with how she feels and what she thinks is right. And she's kind of like, my opinion and my thoughts is what is truth. And so she believes in parts of the Bible. She believes in parts of the Quran. She's agnostic. She 100% believes in God. She taught me God as a child. Like she taught me God and made me love God. But she is not a Muslim. And inshallah one day. Um, she just has a couple of reservations. My mum is very strange because she will literally be brought to tears about Islamic stories. I will tell her Islamic stories all of the time. And she will be brought to tears about it. And she has done like an amazing progression. And she will sit there for hours and listen to me recite Quran or listen to me like read the Quran in English aloud to her she will sit and she will love it and she will love for me to teach her and I go over my family's house often and I give my siblings lectures about Islam and my mum will sit there and she will love it and she will listen and she will pay attention and there's like little things that she does right for example talking in the bathroom in Islam, we're not supposed to talk in the bathroom, right? My mum has got that drilled in her head so much. She, and she accepts that with so much like affirmation that if somebody speaks in the bathroom, she will lose her mind. But then there's some other things that she's just like, like, no, like I'm not going to accept this. So it really is a journey and she's just not there yet. And inshallah, inshallah one day. There was a point where I literally stopped praying for her because she was so bad. She was so like anti-Muslim that I literally thought like she's never gonna become Muslim I'm not even gonna pray for her anymore it's the point where I genuinely gave up and Allah was kind of just like hmm why are you giving up when I'm the turner of hearts and slowly Allah has turned her heart through the way that I've treated her I think and 
through me teaching her I think and Allah has like slowly encouraged her towards Islam a little bit more so I'm really really excited about that but yeah inshallah one day my mum will become a Muslim and inshallah she'll be able to see how the things that have happened in her life resonates with Islam and inshallah my older sister will turn back to Islam because there's nothing I want more than that but yes that's basically my family's revert story and how we have all or majority of us have all come to Islam. I understand how much of a mercy it is that Allah has guided my whole family to Islam. I think it really does have a lot to do with how Allah has turned my heart and how Allah has shaped me and changed my heart and how Islam has benefited me so much. And as a result of that, he's allowed me to treat people around me a lot better. And I feel like a lot of people always recognize the fact that there's a lot of reverts around me and I play a part in a lot of people's revert stories and I really, really, really do think that it is all due to Allah and I don't give myself credit for that. But I think that it's because Allah has allowed me to be a good person to those around me and because I treat people so well, they see that as a representation of Islam and so they are encouraged towards that. So if you are struggling, if you are concerned, if you think Allah will not turn their hearts, be a good person, give them their rights, adhere to your responsibilities and make dua. Never underestimate the power of prayer, you guys. Never think that Allah is not listening to you. Cry to him, like beg him, build a relationship with him, pray to him. And I swear to you, Allah is the most merciful, the most kind, the most generous, the most loving. And I pray that everyone gets to feel this sweetness of faith, like you have benefit those around you and you have played an important role in them accepting Islam and you have played an important role in the good that befalls upon them when accepting Islam. And I pray that those that you love are guided to Islam. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that it lived up to everyone's expectations. And I hope that this has benefited you, increased your faith in some way or whatever else. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe because I'm desperate. Please follow my social media at Smith J Boyle. I do share about my family quite often on my social media. So if you're interested in that, then yeah. I have a video of my little brother, link that below. I have a video about how my brother died, link that below. I have videos coming with my other siblings so if you're interested make sure you subscribe um, make sure you like this video if you do like revert stories it's a good day and if you weren't feeling a good day at the beginning of this video then I hope you're feeling it now and with that being said I'm just gonna go now like bye